to do MSG, I mean, that's kind of the pinch me thing on this tour. It's like, you know, it's just an amazing thing. I mean, Madison Square Garden just seems like something out of the question. And then crazy. I'm going to be playing there in two weeks. I mean, it's a trip, you know. How are you, man? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Good to, good to see anyone. I know. Yeah. In any capacity. So uh, the tour starts pretty soon. We'll talk about that in a moment because you guys are coming here on February 4th. I know that you just go where they tell you to go. So you, you don't have to worry about, well, what day are we doing that? But we'll get to that here in a moment. I have not talked to a musician since I watched Get Back. Man, I've, I've watched it three times all the way through. Really? Yeah. I love it. I mean, I'm obsessed with it. I'll talk about it with anybody. Uh, a friend of mine in a, lo- in a local band told me, he goes, you know, what was really funny about it was that even though they're the freaking Beatles, as just a guy in a band, I, there was a lot there that I identified with in terms of how you interact with one another in a band. I, I'm curious if, if that struck you as to like, wait a second, I've, I have the exact same experiences. Yeah, I mean, just the way... It's- a song kind of evolves and the way, you know, the ways in which you kind of navigate all the per- personalities to get there. You know, one guy likes this about it and somebody feels like it's, they can't really verbalize what's wrong with it yet. And um, yeah, I was watching that and I was just like, Oh yeah, this is just, they're just like every other band I've ever been in or, you know, watched. It's just four. I mean, they're just four twenty, you know, 25 year olds trying to like, figure out some songs. It was really, really mind blowing to be able to just like a fly on the wall like that. One little detail that, that I became obsessed with because this is how my mind works is that after a while I'm going, geez, these guys eat a lot of toast. I know toast and tea and yeah. Toast, tea and cigarettes. That was it. Now I imagine because of what you guys do that you had to be fascinated with the technology that they had at the time. What did you note about that? Were there things like, oh, I'd like to go back in time and grab that thing and, and use it? Well, the recording stuff is obviously like by 2022 20, standards, like the primo, you know, like the stuff that they were just nonchalantly using to put together that little like project basement studio by today's margin is just like the best you could ever ask for. But it was cool to see them bringing in all that Fender gear. You know, like they just bring in a like one day they just bring in the roads and they have this new roads. I don't even think they asked for it. I think it was probably just like, let's bring in some of the new gear, you know? Yeah. Like the silver top roads. And that ended up being like a huge part of the record. And I loved when George, you know, he was really influenced by um Clapton play the guitar through the Leslie. You see, at one point he has that little pickup that he puts on the acoustic guitar and he puts it up to his neck and he just starts like chanting or something through the Leslie speaker. And you're like, oh, yeah, like at every turn, they were like innovating some, or just like doing the the most random thing that nobody else was doing, you know? And really, I mean, you're a band that uses the studio as an instrument. I know I was reading about uh, you were trying to figure out how to do the tape loop and you've got the tape stretched out like 30 feet or whatever. And you're yeah. you're trying to get this machine to do what what you want? I mean, it's really as much as the technology has changed. It, it it really the approach, if you have the time and the patience for it, is pretty much the same, right? Yeah, for sure. It probably is the same because you're really just like in this room trying to like scrape together different sounds and different things that inspire the next sound. The journey is the fun part, you know. Is just mm-hmm. like uh, in the moment you don't really realize you're like where you're going to end up. It doesn't feel that exciting when you're in it, but we're looking back. Like if you just think about the way you built the song up, you're like, Oh wow. Yeah. That was like quite a, quite a feat where we started that thing and where it ended up. You know, I know that you and and the rest of the band, you get very obsessive about songs and about sounds. I imagine that it's difficult for you to say, okay, this song is done. How do you know in your guts that, okay, this is exactly how I want it? What is it? Can you describe that feeling? Or do you ever feel completely comfortable with, with saying, okay, this song is finished? I mean, with certain situations, I feel like I'm always tweaking because I'm always kind of changing the arrangement, you know, because not every song is done kind of in the room um, with the guys. And the songs where you are confident enough in the song, like maybe you've recorded it a few times to where you can sit in the room and put the basic tracks down with the guys. Those are always the ones that feel the easiest to finish because the song is right in front of you. And, you know, and you're just kind of like 
adding to it and having fun. And then at some point you're like, yeah, it sounds great. You know, like you might tweak a few things, but the general impression of the song remains the same. Sometimes I feel like you're starting with something a little bit more esoteric, like a, a loop or a like a synth bridge or something. You're trying to like weave these parts together. Like, how do I make a verse? You know, where does this song go? And you're kind of building it in the studio. And those are the ones that tend to feel a little bit more nebulous sometimes. Like you don't know. I guess for me, it's like the sooner I finish the other songs, the ones that are like a little bit more free flowing, those those come into focus much quicker once everything around it is kind of completed. Because then it kind of has like a context. Yeah. For the rest of the record or something. That makes sense. Now I have, I've always had a very, uh, I I guess the word is visceral reaction to music that really speaks to me. You know, the, the goosebumps, the chills, this is, this is a great chills album. That's how I knew it was my favorite record of last year. Oh, Um, thanks. I I reacted to it that way. And that's always, I, I guess not everybody has that experience with music. Do you to your own music, if you do at all in that, in that way, or what are like a record or two that, that do that to you, that give you that, that physical reaction to it? Yeah. I think that's kind of the thing I look for when, you know, when you're asking about when you know something is done, I think there's just something in the way the song makes me feel, even though I've listened to it probably 2,500 times, you know, it's like, there's just something feels complete and like the mood of the song I'm, I'm getting that's coming across to me. <clears throat> Maybe a record like Heroes or something yeah. um, is one that I, when I, I just have a very strong reaction to that record every time I put it on for the last 20 years or like the Blue Mask by Lou Reed or something. Oh. It's just like a very, it's like a color of the album. Like when you put it on, there's just, a, you're going into like a, an orb and you oh, already I- know what it is, you know? I'm getting chills just thinking about the song Waves of Fear. Oh, yeah. Which I only saw Lou once, and that was at Lollapalooza uh, in 2009. I'm like, I hope he does Waves of Fear, and he did it. And it was like such a mind-blowing experience because that's a, kind of an obscure record. But I was the, that song just, just... Probably one of my favorite ones, for sure. Oh, it's so great. It's so great. Yeah. Well, now there's been so many delays, and you've been living with these songs for so long, and then you got to work them up. Now they're going to take on a different context for you in the band because you get to finally present them to people. Um, and you rehearsed at uh, a famous studio, did you not? SIR in Los Angeles, where Neil Young did Tonight's the Night. Were there any ghosts? <laughs> yeah, we were there. Oh, my God. We were there in July of last year. We hadn't been together since January of 2020. So the record had been done and then we, we hadn't really played any of the songs as this six piece band, it's like in a room at all. Like the third day in one of the SIR guys told me that we were in the motorhead room, that whenever they would rehearse, um, <laughs> they would lock out this room for a month. And he's like, oh, Lemmy was right over there. I was like, oh, man, like some his- maybe more history in this room than. Oh, my God. But um, that place is great. I mean, it's just right on Sunset Boulevard, and you could kind of close your eyes and picture SIR in the early 70s or something. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, just bands loading in and out. And we popped our head into Studio One, the Neil Room, and Kamazi Washington was in there rehearsing. And it's just like a trip, you know? And, like, um, it's cool because those guys that all work there, they kind of know that they're part of, like, a, a legacy like that. You know, like, they understand, like, that, that SIR, for, even though it's just, like, a rehearsal place, that it, it has, like, a lot of history and people care about that stuff. And um, it's cool. It was, a lot, it was a great place to um, get the guys together for the first time. We're, like, heading into this tour, like, more prepared musically on these songs and we've probably ever been for a tour is harmonia's dream going to be in the set list oh yeah for sure oh thank you it's my favorite song in the record oh thank you i think it's the first time every song on the record is on the basically because we've had enough time to practice everything yeah well and people love the record too they're they're going to want to hear it and i know the challenge for you guys is to make sure that you can get through the tour <laughs> without every anybody getting sick i mean I, I know. It's got to be kind of stressful at this point. Do you wear like space helmets? I mean, uh, you've got to have a lot of rules, right? A lot of rules. Um, I mean, that's basically been my whole life for the last six weeks is just me and my tour manager talking. It's about COVID. I mean, constantly, you know, it's like he doesn't have time to do anything other than COVID protocol stuff. Yeah, we just have a lot of rules, the six of us, you know, and even our crew as well. It's like, we get along really well and the bands can 
definitely exist in a backstage bubble without friends coming by and without going to bars every night. <laughs> and, um, you know, we have multiple recording rigs and it's going to be a new thing, but we just got to make it through these four and a half, five weeks, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think we can do it. It's just, it is stressful to think about, but everybody understands we're just going to put our head down and, and uh, find a way to do all these shows and stay healthy. And Speaking as a fan, speaking as a fan of live music as well, I appreciate the effort. It's, I want to get back out there and go to shows. I mean, it's just, it's like literally like fuel, it's food. I, I, I miss it so much. I haven't been to a lot of shows in the last couple of years. Uh, Madison Square Garden, just days before you play here. Yeah. What, a, what an achievement, huh? That's kind of the pinch me thing on this tour, even if however many people show up. I mean, we're just going to go and play our songs and we'll be happy for however many people come. To do MSG, I mean, yeah, that's like, you know, it's just an amazing thing. I mean, Madison Square Garden just seems like something out of the question. You know, it just doesn't even seem like something realistic. And then, you know, I was watching um, the George Harrison documentary last night, the Scorsese one, and they do concert for ba- Bangladesh at MSG. Right. And I was like, yeah. oh, man crazy i'm gonna be playing there in two weeks i mean it's a trip you know well enjoy it you guys have worked hard to get to this point and just in terms of getting everybody together and tuned up and ready to go we're so excited to see you guys on february 4th at kemba live and obviously madison square garden that's going to be a lot of fun you're doing bonnaroo this summer so onward and upward good times ahead onward right? and upward. yeah we're bringing the music to the people we're going to do our thing um we're going to love every moment of it. We're going to stay safe, keep, keep the fans safe best we can. So congratulations on the record and everything. Thanks and a lot. Uh, safe travels, Adam. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you.